right, chapter five, Common Core. This is going to be barrels and barrels and barrels of fun. Easily the hardest chapter in the uh, the book. But we start out pretty easy here. Uh, you have two lines that intersect. It's asking for the solution, which means the point in which these two lines cross, the point in which they intersect. And they seem to intersect at one one, two, three. So the point is one, three. E. Easy. Easy, 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 easy. Problem two, pretty similar to problem one. What am I supposed to do here? State the solution to the system of equations for lines A and D. So which one's A? A is red, D is purple. So those two lines, A and D, intersect right there, which is the point 2, 2. Back. Didn't mean to do that. 2, 2. Where are we at, Valet? <laughs> oh, because of a 2, 2. Well, that's that. All right, problem three, same exact picture as before, but instead we want C and E. So there's E, E is green, C is blue, green and blue intersect at that point right there, which is negative one, negative two, because you go left one down two, negative one, negative two is C. Do you see? <laughs> uh, man. Problem four, finally a challenge. Uh, it actually is gonna be a challenge because trying to draw on my screen with that guy right there isn't gonna be so easy. But I'll do the, the best I can uh, with the tools that I have. And those tools, I don't see that I can use a line. No, shout it out activity, that sounds fun. All right, first equation I'm going to make in red is y equals x plus two which means I start at two there, and since the slope is an invisible one in front of x, the slope is going to be one over one, which means up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one. I'm actually not doing a half bad job. My dots don't really look like dots, but at the very least, a line is forming. I take it back. Uh, it's gonna be tough gonna be tough but I think that's all I need so far although it goes against every fiber in my being to cut a line short so let's keep drawing dots did I screw up no just a bad picture okay so as far as lines go that's not the worst line ever but it's certainly not the best all right so again if you're wondering what just happened y equals x plus two means I have a slope of one, or in this case, one over one. I have a y-intercept of two, so I started uh, at two right there, and uh, I went up on right one. Similarly, and I'm gonna draw the next one in blue, I have a slope of three, or three over one, and I start at negative two. So I'm gonna put a dot at negative two, I'm going to go up one, two, three over one, one, two, three over one, and that's where things intersect. One, two, three over one, one, two, three over one. Or I can go back to this point here and go down three, left one, down three, left one, draw my line. That's where the magic happens, right there. Uh, and that's my second equation. So these two lines intersect at that guy right there. And that guy right there appears to be four, two. Just kidding, two, four, two, four, two, four. <laughs> I'm not redoing it. So I'm just gonna quick erase it and pretend I didn't make a mistake. Two, four, two, four. Ah, no, this page is awful. Two, four. There you go. Now, if you wanted to check your work mentally, uh, if it's two, four, that means X is two. 
and uh, y is 4. So if I go to the first equation and replace x with 2, I get 2 plus 2 is 4, which makes sense. If I replace the second x in the second equation 3 times 2, I get 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Uh, I did it right. Now on to the next one. State the number of solutions to a system of equations that has a graph of two lines that cross at one point. Well, if two lines are going to cross at one point, you're just going to get one solution. Like everything we've done so far has been one solution. Bada bing. Bada bing. All right. Problem six. State the number of solutions to a system of equations that has a graph of two lines that are parallel. What's parallel mean? Well, if this is a parallel line and this is a parallel line, then those lines are never going to intersect. And if they never intersect, you're not going to have any answers. So this is going to be a big C. No solutions. Parallel lines intersect never. So no solutions. Write the equation in slope-intercept form, y plus 2x equals negative 5. Let me write that guy out right here. Uh, y plus 2x equals negative 5. In order for me to get y all by itself, I have to subtract 2x from both sides. Minus 2x, minus 2x, those cross out. Okay, negative 5 and negative 2x don't combine. It would be best if I wrote out negative 2x because, well, that's what you do first for slope-intercept form. That's minus 5, so I'm going to put minus 5, and that's my guy. You are now in slope-intercept form, which is going to be B. It's going to be B, Justin Timberlake. All right, that's that. Write the equation in slope-intercept form. Same exact problem. Well, same exact type of problem, but this one's a little bit worse. I have 3y minus x equals 9, okay? Uh, not only do I have negative x in the way, but I have 3 in the way. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the guy that's floating around first, and the guy that's floating around is negative x. So I'm going to add x to both sides. The way that I'm going to write this out in a way that's going to benefit me the most is since x and 9 don't combine, I have a positive x that I'm going to write out first and a positive 9 that I'm going to write out second. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I know what my next step is. Okay. I'm going to divide everything by 3, which means I'm going to divide an x by 3 or 1x by 3. So I'm sneaking a 1 in front of that x. Now, when I divide everything by 3, I don't have just x over 3, because if I look at my answers, x over 3 is not an option. I have, and let me write everything over here, y equals 1 third x plus whatever 9 divided by 3 is. I think I can handle that one. And that's going to be c, another c. Or was it b last time? I don't remember. Okay, that's how I write that equation in slope-intercept form. Fun. Ugh, another solve by graphing. Is someone trying to ruin my day? All right, what do I do? First off, I have two equations that aren't even solved for y. So if I want to solve both of these by graphing, I have to first get y all by itself. So let me do the top one in red. x minus y equals 6. Okay, it may look I only have an x, like I have an x in the way, but I actually have an x and a negative in the way, specifically a negative 1, because that's not a positive y, that's a negative y. So I'm going to sneak that 1 there, okay? I'm going to sneak that 1 right there. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x, subtract x. The way I'm going to write this in a way that's beneficial to me is negative 1y equals negative x positive 6, okay? Now what I do is I divide everything by negative 1. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, cross you out. And y is going to equal negative over negative 1 is regular 1x or just x. 6 divided by negative 1 is minus 6. So I'm going to graph this guy in green. And the way I do that, if I'm graphing y equals... Uh, x minus 6 in green as I start out at negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. My slope is 1, so up one right one, 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 up one right one. 
Ha. Down one left one. Down one left one. Down one left one. Down one left one. And there's my line in green. Okay. Whew. All right. Well, that was fun. Is there another equation? Uh, yeah. And I'm going to start that in purple. So I have, I'll write it over here. I'll try to write it small. 2x two, <laughs> two plus y equals 3. y is positive, and that's nice. If I subtract 2x from both sides, minus 2x. On the right side, I have a 3 minus 2x, or a negative 2x plus 3. OK, so I'm graphing that bottom equation. And if you look at the original equation, all you have to do is just get rid of that 2x and y is going to be all by itself. So I start at 3, 1, 2, 3, because 3 is my y-intercept. OK, my slope is negative 2 or negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to go up to left 1, up to left. Oh, that's awful left one, up to left one, or I can go down to right one, 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 down to right one. Oh my gosh. Drawing lines with the touch screen is not fun at all. That's right. I got the part that I needed the most, and that's that guy. That guy right there, which looks to be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, negative 3. So let's scroll down and pick that option. A, as the Fonz would say. A. Any more on this page? Nope. Page 6 complete. State the number of solutions to a system of equations that has a graph of two lines that coincide. Coincide means they're the same exact line. So if I were to draw a line like this, and if I were to draw a line like this, and these lines just seem to run into each other forever and ever and ever, you're going to have a whole bunch of answers. How many? An infinite amount. If it's the same exact line graphed on top of the same exact line, they're going to run into each other forever and ever and ever, which means infinite, ugh, infinitely many solutions. <laughs> I sound like a, a puppy dog with peanut butter stuck to the roof of his mouth. It's from a movie. I don't remember which one. Solve this system of solutions using substitution. All right. Well, I already know that X is 2 because it says it right there. So this is about as easy as they get. If x is 2, I could take the fact that x is 2 and plug it into the other equation right away. y is going to be 4 times 2 plus 8. Okay, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 plus 8 is 16. So if x is already 2 and y is 16, that gives me the point where they intersect x is 2 y is 16. Dunzo funzo. Okay, that's an interesting problem, but that's as simple as a substitution problem that you'll ever see ever in your entire life. Ever. This is a weird word problem. Which equations uh, represent the figure? Cube is an x and cylinder is y. So it looks like I have a cube, one of them plus... Hmm, I have one of them plus one cylinder equals four. And two cubes and one cylinder equals five. So is that that guy right there? I think it is. Kind of weird. Weird. Kind of easy. I said eared, which is a mix of easy and weird. Creating my own language. Got to do something in all this free time. Oh boy, this sounds great. The Mathville cafeteria sells eggs and toast at a fixed price. Mm. Yesterday, Rick ordered two eggs and one piece of toast and was charged a dollar fifty. Today, so okay, all right. Well, anyway, today he ordered two eggs and two pieces of toast and was charged a dollar ninety. Which system of equations could be used to find the cost of each item? 
Okay, X is eggs and Y is toast. So in day one, Rick ordered two eggs, which means if X is eggs, he ordered two X's. Okay, and uh, if Y is toast, he also ordered one piece of toast. So that's just one Y. And all of that is going to equal a dollar and 50 cents. It's pretty cheap. Good job, Mathville Cafeteria, for keeping your prices reasonable and fair. Uh, today, he ordered two eggs, which is two X's again. And he ordered two pieces of toast. Oh, Rick, you renegade. How much did that all cost, Rick? It costed him a dollar and 90 cents. So it looks like my equation, 2x and a y, 2x and a y, 2x and a y, 2x and a y is $1.50. Oh, look at the difference between D and E. Okay, D is one fifty. E is 1.50. He's not spending $150 on two eggs and toast. That's crazy. That's the answer you should come up with. Much more reasonable of a price. Maybe if you went to Mathville uh, Preparatory School, <laughs> that cafeteria, that's probably $150. Prices are outrageous at places like that. Problem 14, things start to get a little interesting. We have ourselves a system of equations and we're asked to being solve, or to solve it uh, using the old substitution method. So step one in substitution, and I have a thousand videos on this if you need to see it. Uh, tells you to solve any equation for any variable. Well, both equations are solved for y. So if y is 6x plus 15, if y is 6x plus 15, and if y is also 5x, then 6x plus 15 is equal to 5x. They equal each other. If y is this and y is that, if y is red, and y is also green, then red is green. Which, of course, we know it's not. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to subtract both sides by 6x. Now, that goes against every inch of my being, but I'm doing it anyway because what it will do is give us a 15 on the left, and 5x's take away 6x's is negative 1x. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and 15 divided by negative 1 is x uh, equals negative 15. That's supposed to be a... Is that a 5? It is. See what I did? I looked up. Does that work right? It's like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> uh, all right. So x is negative 15. Now I have to find y. Once you have your x value, take that x value and plug it into any equation that you want. Uh, I'm going to plug it into the bottom one because it's easier. So if x is negative 15, then y is going to equal 5 times negative 15. And 5 times negative 15 is negative 75. So x is negative 15, y is negative 75, I have a. Okay, and right off the bat, once I got to x is negative 15, I already knew that these guys were no good, but I wasn't allowed to just randomly circle anyone that seemed to be right. I have to be a little bit more careful with these things. A summer camp has 250 campers. There are 32 more boy campers than girl campers. Which system of equations represents the solution? Well, I have B and G. So if I have a total of 250 campers, then B plus G is 250. Okay, B plus G is 250, which gets rid of these two guys. Now, boys, there's 32 more of them. So boys is going to be girls plus 32. Give me B. Okay. Okay. 16. First time we are being asked to do elimination. And it actually is set up pretty nicely for us. I'm not going to lie. NGL. Not going to lie. I already have everything lined up perfectly and in order. So y plus or x plus y equals 10. 
and I have x minus y equals 12. Now, if you're doing elimination, what you're looking for is you're looking at um, a variable that one and like an x or a y, the one on top of the other is exactly the same, but one's positive and one's negative. And that's what I have with the y's. I have a positive y, I have a negative y. So if I were to add both equations together, if I were to add both lines together, I would have x plus x, which is 2x. I would have y plus negative y, which is nothing. They cancel out. And 10 plus 12 is 22, the Taylor Swift special. If I divide both sides by 2 to get x all by itself, x is going to equal 11. Now, right now, I have my answer because that's the only one where x is 11. But... I'm going to keep going. If I want to find y, I take that x equals 11 value and plug it into any equation to solve for y. It would be easier to plug it into the top one because y is already positive and there's nothing in front of it. So if x is 11, if I take the top equation, which is right there, and replace x with 11 because x is 11, I have 11 plus y equals 10. Is y all by itself? No. What's in the way? 11. So if I subtract 11 from both sides, minus 11 minus 11, y is going to equal 10 minus 11, which is negative 1. So x is 11, y is negative 1, just like we said. And we just did the whole thing anyway because we're good people. Solve the equation, uh, a system of equations using elimination. This is very, very, very similar to the one we just did. If I were to rewrite everything um, over here, uh, let me give myself a little bit more space. I have a plus b equals zero. I have a minus b equals negative six. Okay, when you're looking for elimination or to do things using elimination, uh, you are hoping to have one variable and the other variable be exactly the same. I don't know why that's acting funky over there. Uh, be exactly the same where one's positive and one's negative. And that's what I have with the Bs. So if I add these two right now, I get A plus A, which is two A's. I have B plus negative B, which is nothing. They cancel each other out. And I have, that's supposed to be a negative six, not a negative one. Uh, I have zero plus negative six, which is negative six. If I take everything and divide it by two, take everything and divide it by two, a is going to equal negative three, which similar to, similarly to the last one, I have my answer already because that's the only one where A, the first letter, is negative three. But if I wanted to find B anyway, because I'm a good person, I would take the top equation and find B by plugging A is negative three. Why the top equation and why not the bottom equation? Because B is just positive B here and it's easier to find B that way. So if I take the top equation, which is a plus b equals zero, and if I replace the fact that a is negative three, if I replace a with negative three plus b equals zero, add three to both sides, and b is positive three. Again, a problem that was very, very, very similar to the one we just did, but practice makes perfect. Speaking of a problem that looks very similar, the Mathville Cafeteria is at it again, selling their eggs and toast. Uh, yesterday, Rick ordered two eggs. X is the number of eggs. So X is the number of eggs. He ordered two eggs and he ordered one piece of toast and it cost him $1.50. I feel like it was $1.40 last time. So maybe this problem's different, but I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. Also, he ordered two eggs. So let's get our red back out. Uh, and two pieces of toast, just like the last one. Let's get our green out. And all of that cost $1.90. A dollar and ninety cents. Now this is where things get a little different. If I'm doing elimination, what you're looking for is you're trying to find a variable where the coefficient, the number in front, is exactly the same. However, one's got to be positive, or one's got to be negative. I have a two x right here and a two x right there, but they're both positive two x's. So what can I do? 
take one of those equations and multiply one of those equations by negative one. And what that will do, if I multiply both equations by negative one, is it'll take that positive 2x up there and make it negative 2x, and then I can finally add things. So let me write, let me rewrite everything right here. If I multiply negative one times everything, I have negative one times positive 2x, so negative 2x. I have negative one times positive y, so negative one y equals negative one times 150, negative 150. The bottom equation is gonna be exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure glad I set it up this way and you will see why in one second. If I add the two equations, if I add the two equations up, I have negative 2x plus 2x, which cancels out. I have negative y plus 2y, which is just 1y. And negative 150 plus 190, which is just 0.40. What does that mean? Y, which is the piece of toast, is 40 cents. So toast is 40 cents. Toast is 40 cents. You're not my answers. The toast is 40 cents. Now, Mr. Parrot, you say, I'm a go-getter, and I want to make sure that I did this right. What can I do? Well, let's take that equation that I see right there. This equation that I see right there, let's get orange out. Uh, that equation right there. And I know that y is 0.40. Let's turn y into 0.40. So I get 2x plus 2 times 0.40 equals 190 and then solve the rest for x 2x let's see two groups of 40 cents is going to be 80 cents equals 190 okay in order to get 80 all by itself 80 or i'm sorry in order to get um x all by itself we're going to first subtract 80 cents a dollar and 90 cents is going to be uh, I'm sorry, a dollar multitasking is not my strength. The dollar and 90 cents minus 80 cents is going to be a dollar 10. Divide both sides by two. And a dollar 10 divided by two is 0.55, or each egg is 55 cents. Just like we said. Mmm. Mmm. Problem 19, solve the system of equations using the elimination method. Elimination. Well, in order for me to do elimination, what I need is I need two of my variables, one on top of the other, to be exactly the same. Oh, look, the y's are exactly the same, 4y and 4y. But what I need is for one of them to be negative. So what I will do is I'll multiply the bottom one by a negative 1 and take it from there. Uh, when I do that, I end up with 3x plus 4y equals 18 on the top. And I have negative 1 times negative 2, which is positive 2x. Negative 1 times negative, a positive 4y, which is negative 4y. And negative 1 times 8, which is negative 8. Now when I add these guys, when I add the equations, 3x's and 5, 2x's becomes 5x's. You go away, and 18 plus negative 8 is positive 10. If I divide both sides by 5, x equals 2. Now, looking at my answers, you're like, well, those aren't points. What am I supposed to do? Well, here it says all I have to do is solve for x. What did I get just now? x. x is 2. I'm done. I don't have to find y. Look how easy that is. So friendly. Now it's not going to be friendly. 20 is asking, and same with 21, is asking for me to solve the system of equations using substitution. Well, step one in substitution is make sure one of your equations is solved all by itself. Fortunately for 20, y equals 2x plus 3, and y also equals 3x plus 1. So not only is both or the top equation solved for y, but both equations are solved for y. So if y is red, and if y is green, then red is also the same as green. So 2x plus 3 
is going to equal 3x plus 1. Okay? I have a variable on the left. I have a variable on the right. So what I would like to do is I would like to subtract 2x from both sides, minus 2x, minus 2x, cross that out, bring down the 3, bring down the equals. 3x minus 2x is 1x plus 1. To get x all by itself, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, minus 1, minus 1, cross you out. And x is equal to 2. I was about to say my handwriting is getting so much better with this thing, but then that 2 just happened. But x is 2. What don't I have? I don't have y. In order for me to find y, I take the fact that x is equal to 2, and I plug it into any equation. Really, any equation will do because it's I'm supposed to find y, so why not just do y equals the top one? So if I rewrite out the top equation, y equals 2x plus 3, if x is 2, then I can turn that into y equals 2 times 2 plus 3 y equals 2 times 2 plus 3 means 4 plus 3, and y will equal 7. So if x is 2 and y is 7, my solution is the point 2, 7. Okay? And if I wanted to quick check my work, I would just quick take the fact that x is 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. And what's y supposed to be? 7. Okay, and if I wanted to check it again, uh, x is 2. 3 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And what was I supposed to get? 7. So I did it right. Okay, a quick check uh, could really go a long way. Oh, I should, I should copyright that. A quick check can go a long way, <laughs> especially if that check is for a lot of money. Am I right? <laughs> okay. Uh, substitution again in the same type of problem again. So what I have is I have Y equals red. I have Y equals blue. And if Y is red and if Y is blue, then red is blue. I have two x's on the left. I have four x's on the right. So it would make sense to uh, subtract two x because it's the smallest one. And I always like getting rid of the smallest x. Minus two x, minus two x. Cross that out. I'm going to drop down negative 10 equals four x minus two x is two x and drop down the negative eight. It's supposed to be an 8. It's supposed to be an I give up. Uh, is x all by itself? No. What's in the way? 2's in the way and negative 8's in the way. So I'm going to add 8 and add 8 to both sides. Cross u out. Negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2 equals positive 2x. Is x all by itself? No. What's in the way? 2. Divide everything by 2. Divide everything by 2. By 2, I said. I think my computer's starting to lag a little bit. Two divide, negative 2 divided by regular 2 says that x is going to be negative 1. x is negative 1. How do I find y? Plug it into any equation and solve for y. So I'm going to plug it into the top equation. When I plug it into the top equation, I get y equals 2 times x. No, x is negative 1 minus 10. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 10. That's a 10 again. Negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12. So if x is negative 1 and y is negative 12, a quick check means I take 2 times x, which was negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12, which is what I'm supposed to get. If I want to check it here, 4 times x, which is negative 1, is going to be negative 4, and negative 4 minus 8 is also negative 12. So even though my numbers are quite different, negative 1 and negative 12 are kind of a big, small type thing, uh, and ended up being right anyway. I don't make mistakes. I don't make 
Mistakes. Page, last page, last page. Elimination. Uh, elimination says that if I have everything lined up, which I do, my X is my Y's and my numbers are all lined up. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for an X or a Y where the numbers are exactly the same, but one number is positive and one number is negative. If you look, my X's are exactly the same. Um, but that's the problem. They're exactly the same. They're both 6X. I need one of them to be negative. So I'm going to take the top equation. Well, the bottom equation. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to take the bottom equation and multiply it by negative 1. Okay. So if I rewrite out the top equation, 6X plus 3Y equals negative 12. And the bottom equation, multiply everything by negative 1. I'm going to get negative 6X minus 2Y equals positive 4. I took everything on the bottom and made it negative. Or made it the opposite, I guess I should say. Now when I add the equation, 6x positive negative 6x, or regular 6x, cancels out. 3y minus 2y is going to be y, which makes life easy. And uh, negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. So y is negative 8. Now what I have to do is I have to find x. So I'm just going to take the top equation. You could take either equation and rewrite it out but replace y with negative eight. So this is me rewriting out the top equation, y plus three, or six x plus three times negative eight equals negative 12, okay? When I do that, I have six x minus 24 equals negative 12. Is X all by itself? No. What's in the way? Negative 24. So I'm going to add 24. I'm going to add 24 to both sides. 6X equals 12. Is X all by itself now? No. What's in the way? 6. Divide everything by 6. And X equals 2. So if X is 2 and Y is negative 8, then I have 2 comma negative 8. Okay. And if you want to check your work, be my guest. Be my guest. Put your mathic to the test. Okay. Problem 23, elimination. I am looking to find two variables that are exactly the same, but one's positive and one's negative. Oh, look at that. The y's are both twos, and one of them's positive, and one of them's negative. So right away, I can add them. 2x plus regular x is 3x. Negative 2y and 2y is nothing. And negative 8 plus negative 1 is negative 9. Divide both sides by 3. And x becomes negative 3. Now that I have x is negative 3, I need to get y, so you take that x and plug it into any equation. I'm going to plug it into the bottom equation because it looks a little bit friendlier than the top equation. So I'm going to rewrite the bottom equation, x plus 2y equals negative 1. All I did was rewrite the bottom equation. I'm going to change x into negative 3, negative 3 plus 2y equals negative 1. I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get y all by itself. 2y equals negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Is y all by itself? No. What is in the way? 2 divided by 2 divided by 2. And y is 1. So my answer is going to be... I think that's it. I think I'm all out of problems. So, bye. Enjoy chapter five, the worst chapter of the book. <laughs> Enjoy.